Hey, let's take a look at Blazor WebAssembly head content. Um, just set the metadata tags for SEO, search engine optimization. Let me tell you, it's not very good as, an, as with most single page application frameworks. Um, and most of the solutions the most of the decent solutions contains something with pre-rendering or server-side rendering, but I'm not going to go into that for this video. We're simply going to see how to set these metadata tags dynamically. So let's start with an existing application. This one has been online for some time now. It's a Blazor WebAssembly application, client side. Uh, and you see, so this is the index page. And you see quite some meta tags, the regular ones, viewport description, then the OG ones, the open graph ones, it's for the social media platforms, the Twitter ones. And then you see my my static files, CSS and JSON and images. And then you see the page title, which you can also see in the tab. And then you see a repeat of these meta tags. That's my mistake, but it's the default behavior of the Blazor. Meta tag, uh, how do I call it? The, the head content is to actually append your new meta tags to the existing head. So it can happen that you have duplicate tags. Let's first, let's. Uh, Let's check out why this is not that great. Um, so I pasted this link in Facebook. Actually, sorry. Let me paste the index page first. Oops. Let's see if I can uh, messing up. Anyway, this is what you'd see if I paste the index page. And then if I click on a dog, it should actually, you saw something's changed in here. So these are the new meta tags appended to the original ones with a yeah, slight delay since it had to, yeah, since it's all dynamic. Um, pom, 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 pom. And you see some different texts. Also in the open tab, you'll see it has the name of the dog, the breed, and things like that. It has a slug. Let me copy this slug and paste it in here and nothing changes which is unfortunate let me paste it again and if you took if you um, watched carefully it's exactly the same one, which is very unfortunate. I would want to like share dogs with other people and at least give them some visual feedback about what the content is and not this gen general uh, index page content. That's very unfortunate. 
that it works like that. So I wouldn't say it's a great solution, but I guess with single page application frameworks, purely in client side, you can't really do much better. Um, let's dive into code and see how this works. So let's go to my single page application. I think it's in the program CS. And you see this builder root components that add head outlet head after. This after is important. You can either do before or after if I'm not mistaken. Before will replace the entire head content. So uh, what I mean with head content is everything between the head tags, which is also your styling files and all those things. And after is, like I mentioned, is appending to the head component. The reason these uh, actually display like the name and the, the breed and all that is because of course it appended to the head component and the, the, the order matters. So the first ones are going to be overridden by the last ones. That's kind of also how it works with if you add the styling a style sheet, let's say the bootstrap team or something, and then you add your own styling which has similar which override one which needs to override uh, css classes of the bootstrap one then you have to add your own after the bootstrap one to make sure your your will be seen as the uh yeah as the ones to override so it's the same with meta tags, the last ones override the first ones if there are duplicate things. Let's check out the behavior and see if what I'm saying is true. Let's confirm it. I'm running my projects, oops. Uh, oh. The wrong page. Here it is. I see an error. Okay, I run the app after fixing some typos. So, a Blazor WebAssembly client app with some meta tags defined. These are, of course, defined in the index.html, not yet dynamically. Let's create a component with, uh, using the, bl the Blazor head content component, uh, the page title, which uh, is supported by Blazor to manipulate this original page title and everything between the head. And let's confirm both behaviors of the before and the after. Normally I just do this in my shared folder or in my pages or whatever, but I'm going to make this in my shared SPA components. I'll just add it here. Meta tags layout. And let's use what Blazor provides, a page title. Enables rendering in the HTML title to the head outlet component. This head outlet is this. Let's see if we can look into it. Kind of manipulating the DOM or something. Okay. 
And let's just set the dummy title. The next thing would be head content. Also out of the box from Blazor. Let's put in a description. Dummy description. Oops, and that should be all. I am now going to put that on the events page. Stop. Let's see. Meta tags layout. And let's see what it gives. Normally it should append these things. I think replace the page title of course, but append this description on the bottom at the bottom of the head HTML head tag. Let's see. And it was on the events page. And something changed, this dummy description got appended and the title became dummy title, which you can also see in the open tab. Mm. If we would now try to paste this link into Facebook, first of all, localhost isn't going to do any good. Um, So let's use our ng rock to do that, to proxy, to make this local host publicly available. Opening the terminal and I think I had to do it like this. Yeah, it's already there. So ng rock HTTP is protocol and then the link to expose then it's going to provide me with publicly accessible links so let's open this one Ooh. um why let's ignore this Let's make sure our network caching is disabled. What's happening? Uh, so, okay, this is in this uh, link. Let's go to events. And paste this link into Facebook. if that even works. Mm, yeah, seems to work, but just like the previous demo, uh, the real world application, the, this application, I mean, existing application, it's just rendering the meta tags of the index page of the index.html, not really the, dyna the dynamic ones because the title should be dummy title um, and so on. So that's not really useful. Um, so you can wonder if, if it's uh, worth the trouble. Let's now check out what happens with the before. Um, so that should Head outlet before should replace the entire head content. I don't know, I'm not sure if that's a good practice since you have the styling ones as well. So then everything has to reload. Um, 
if it would result in an in a decent rendering in Facebook, for example, it might be worth it. But uh, yeah, let's check it out. Let's stop our tunnel for now. Proxy, whatever you want to call it. And put it on before. I checked the Microsoft Docs if anything changed, but uh, it doesn't appear to be. Let's see, why is it? Hmm, before is not supported. Then I quickly have to look up what the, the one was to replace the head tag. I can't really find anything. Either it's no longer supported or it's just head. Let's try that. And then you see the CSS got removed, so it's probably this. Let's check out the head tag. And there's <laughs> there's nothing, not, e not even, ah, we're not on the event page, of course. Let's see if we can get there. Events and now there is a title and a description. So let's publicly expose that and see what Facebook gives. Uh, note the CSS styling tags are gone and all that stuff. You could maybe replace them, but I'm not sure if that's good practice. So we are going to try this again. Have a publicly accessible. And it gives me a warning that it's unsafe, but we don't care. Okay, it might, yeah. It's the browser caches. This URL is, is unique each time and somehow it caches the files and then it says it can find them and blah, blah, blah. It's not that great. The CSS seems already gone in here, which is odd. I pasted the link, the new link into Facebook and the preview, again, is just the one from the static index.html, which is odd because the index didn't seem to have any tags. Uh, it has, and then they just <laughs> all disappear. So this is already pretty bad. That, yeah, that's because I did it. Uh, I told it to do that, of course, with the head. Um, but what you could do, of course, is now copy the tags from the index page and put them in the meta tags layout component, and then they would be there again, but as I said, you, the CSS has to reload and all that stuff. Um, and it's not actually helping for the end goal, which is have nice previews while sharing uh, better discoverability and stuff for specific animals or shelters or, sh or products or whatever. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look too good. What I did to get somewhat visibility is more is make a server side page and blaze in razor pages um, just to yeah, have a more gener general page uh, displaying the app and all those things. 
Um, this one has better SEO since it's server side rendered, which Razor Pages does automatically. That's a server side framework. This has just some bootstrap and some JavaScript for the animations, but nothing special, nothing like Blazor Web Assembly. And since I'm making progressive web apps, I don't actually mind making a product page to promote it, so to speak. Uh, it's a bit similar if you would make a native app and put it in the app stores. The native app won't have any or not to create SEO either. Uh, Google Play Store is going to provide some SEO, I guess, and then maybe the company will probably make a product page to highlight their product and, gener and generate some traffic, some visitors that way. And that's also the approach I'm going to take. Um, with these highly dynamic apps, it's kind of hard to do SEO since the Google crawlers, uh, as, uh, the the crawlers can't really know when your page is, your dynamic app is going to be fully loaded and yeah, it makes it harder to navigate these detailed pages and know what which pages are actually inside the app. I might transform this one into a Blazor server application so I can have a bit of both worlds, the dynamic the dynamic uh, components from Blazor WebAssembly and then the server side rendering from Blazor server which uses Signal R, if I'm not mistaken, to yeah, update the UI. I'll make more videos about that in the future, and I'll definitely tackle the SEO part of that. But I want what I wanted to say is with these highly dy dynamic apps, it's often used for like admin panels uh, or like this, progressive web apps and all those kind of apps. Um, yeah kind of have to sacrifice SEO for that, unless you go the pre-rendering or server-side rendering route, uh, feel free to do so. So yeah, let's finish the video by just yeah, implementing how I did it before, like in the existing app, um, feel free. <laughs> yeah, you don't have, since it, it doesn't have a great outcome. I don't know if it's worth it to do this. Uh, but let's just provide it and feel free to pause the video to copy these things. So we set the page title, page description. That's why I made this a component. Um, I mean, why I use parameters is because it's, yeah, it's more or less always the same. It's a description, a title, an image, an URL. Um, could maybe make this alter or something. Oops. Um, I have some translations. Of course, you could just do this multilingual. Uh, I think I have it in my original application. 
if I change the language to English, mm, nothing seems to have changed, but let's go to the breeds. It should now have the English description. Anyway. So that's possible, but I don't have it in this application. I'm actually not going to default these right now, since it needs to be reusable. Um, let's see. The language tags we might have to come back to that. Okay, like I mentioned, maybe you want to also put your styling tags in here and then replace the head, but like I showed you, it's not worth it since it's not um, giving better results. Mm. But now you might have duplication. I don't know how bad that is for the Google ran ranking. Let's check out. Um, oops, let's just, let's just include this meta text. with the default values. It makes no sense to have the index page, the meta tags be different than the index HTML, I guess. So I'm not gonna set any. Let's inspect it. So we have a content language that I set. I think the title is, yeah, there is no default title. So it actually makes no sense to put this meta tags layout on the index page, since it's probably going to be the same as the index.html. Just know if you want to have something else, you can do it. You could, like how, we, how do you use it? Page title, just like a regular component. Description, link, maybe thumbnail, something else. Um, author. Author, like that. I'm going to make a slight change in here. It might make no sense if the page title is empty to replace it. But if not string, oops, page title. Yeah, in the previous app, I had default values and translated in my translation files. That's why it's what I removed at the bottom. 
Anyway, let's do that. And let's also would say maybe I'm going to nest an if statement, which I don't usually do. I would say if either of those is empty, it's not useful to yeah do anything. Let's rerun it. Fresh. Let's see what happened. Yeah, it didn't change this time. Didn't replace anything and didn't add anything either. So that's good. So on the event page, I'll probably want to set some custom, some custom data. Oops. I might even put this in my shared SPA since I'm my two blazer. Mm, let me think. I have this events component. Yeah, that's just for my use case. So I, um, I'd recommend you. Yeah, set it just on each each page page in your Blazor WebAssembly project. But I have two Blazor client applications that are almost identical, so they're using the same components. I'm just going to put it here. But for the sake of the video, I'm just I'm not gonna just gonna do it the normal way. Oops, because I always have to rebuild, clean and rebuild this shared SPA project. Mm, let's just do it. Sorry, I'm going to do it anyway. So I filled those in. Have to rebuild the projects and rerun them. Events. Okay, and all these tags were added in my native language. You see the title changed. Let's now do a last confirmation with Facebook, see if anything happened. I think it's clear that it's not useful to add metadata tags on other pages than the index.html. Got this port running. And it has the same caching issue again. See, it takes quite a long time to load when nothing is cached yet. I'll talk about it more and when using Lighthouse. Let's see the events page. Let's confirm we have these meta tags. Yep. Let's go over to Facebook. And it shows nothing but the index, the tags defined on the index.html. So it's uh, yeah, it's kind of a waste of time to do it in Blazor WebAssembly. Is the conclusion I would say. Uh, just make sure there 
set on your index.html um, and that's probably going to be more general general uh, descriptions and stuff unfortunately that's all I can do for now I'll show you in a bit about checking performance and SEO scores and all that stuff with the lighthouse let's stop this since it's no use close this one and then we have our application here still running i hope why i was talking about the about how long it took to load on a new on this exposed url because uh, nothing was cached yet and we're going to see that in our performance it's not the performance thingy but it's lighthouse Lighthouse is a Chrome extension, uh, good for checking SEO and progressive web app stuff. Um, you can see more about it in my previous video about progressive web apps, which um, mainly covered these things. But let's focus on Lighthouse, analyze page load. For some reason, it's going to say SEO 92 as a score on 100 to 100. Um, I assume that's just because the index.html meta tags were set, uh, but it's definitely not because of this event stuff. So the performance is not too great. Um, accessibility neither best practices seems better than yesterday links are not crawlable yeah the google bots they follow links throughout your website or through other websites to your website uh, but that's only if you have href tags um, yeah statically i would say on your page so if it's in some blazor component you're gonna yeah it's not going to find it it's not likely going to find it and that's kind of what it's saying here we have H hrf but they're probably just loaded with a delay which are not crawlable let's see i have oh this is So this gives me a very high score, but it's not really um, it's not really what we would want. Just see what it says. Structured data is valid. Doesn't seem to be. Oh, that's. Robots.txt is valid, not applicable. Yeah, I don't really see. I think we're losing points on this one. If I'm not mistaken, I tried to add hidden links in here. Let's see. Can't really find them now, but let's just do the same lighthouse stuff. Seems to be loading the detail page. I wonder. Hmm, whether that's gonna differ a lot from the index page. Oof, yeah, of course, a lot of less performance. Best practices are not there, SEO. It's worse than the other one. Seems there's a there's all checklists for optimizing all this stuff. 
Let's go to the index page and I would like to redo it if I can. I had to press on this. Uh, see if the index page is any better. Since data page might have taken extra long to load for the data. Mm, well, the performance is slightly better, best practice is slightly better. SEO is just the same thing, links are not crawlable. Now let's just add this meta tag theme color to you get that SEO. Uh, no, it's B PWA score better. Let's see. I guess it's just like this. Let's also add this in our other app. Rebuilding it. And one last lighthouse run. Oh, and it gives us a check mark. PWA optimized. So if, if there's anything you got from this video, <laughs> that's how to get a perfect PWA score. I'll leave it at that. And hopefully in the future, I can make videos about Blazor server and compare, compare the SEO support or results there. Ciao.